This is a vinyl sticker that I cut with my Cricut using GraphiTac vinyl, but you can also use Cricut Premium vinyl that already has the transfer tape on it. It is a very easy to make, professional looking sticker that you can sell pretty much anywhere. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to make it. My name is Kelly and let's get clacking. In Cricut Design Space, I'm going to click on Shapes and I'm going to add in a square. Now this will tell me exactly how much space I have to cut on the cutting mat. So I'm going to change the size up at the top to 29.2 centimeters or 11 and a half inches. Now this is the amount of available cutting space on my normal 12 by 12 cutting mat. So anything that I want to cut will have to fit inside this box. It allows me to plan out exactly what I'm going to cut a little bit better. Once I have my square, I'm going to click on the upload button and I'm going to add in the sticker that I have uploaded into Cricut Design Space. So the sticker is here. So I'm going to click on it and click add to canvas in the bottom right hand corner. Now, of course, the sticker is way too big. So I'm going to scale the sticker down by using the little box and the little arrows in the top. Or if I wanted to make it a specific size, I can use the size once again at the top. So I'm going to be changing the size to 16 centimeters wide. So this will be the actual sticker that we will cut. Now, in order to get the nice little white background that we have on this black sticker, we're going to need to use the offset feature. So that provides a little border around the outside of what we want to cut, and that will serve in two purposes. The first purpose is that it will be the cutout for this sticker. And the second purpose is that it will serve as our weeding box, which means that we're able to remove the excess of the vinyl a lot easier. So I'm going to click on offset at the top and it will then open up a little pop-up. Now what we can do is we can take this little dot and we can drag the dot a little bit more to the left side if we want the offset to be a little bit smaller. Or if we want the offset to be a little bit bigger, we can drag it to the right. If you drag it past the little gray line, then it will go an internal offset, which means it'll go on the inside of the lines, which is not what we want here. So I'm going to keep it to the outside. And if you want a specific number, you can then select the numbers in this little block and go 0.5 as an example, which is what we're gonna leave it at. So I'm going to click apply, and this will then apply the offset. Now we do have a few little gaps in our offset. So I'm going to be using the contour feature to remove those gaps. The contour feature removes little parts of our design that we don't want. So I'm going to click on contour and you can see that there are a few different layers onto this contour. Each of these are their own enclosed line. Think of it like a circle. It's a fully enclosed line. It's not a straight line. You can remove these contours in a few different ways. The easiest way that we will use is to click hide all contours. And this removes all of the outside lines, except for the biggest one, which will always be at the top. So the top will be the biggest and it will go in descending size order. So it'll go from largest to smallest down at the bottom. Another way to remove part of the contours is to click on them on the side. So if you click on these little sections, it will either add or remove them from the design. And the third way is to click on them inside the picture itself. But that can be a little bit finicky and it doesn't always land up in the right place. So I prefer using it on the side. And we can simply click away from the contour. You don't need to click save or anything. And you'll see that these little dots that were once inside the image are now gone. So that will be a solid background, which is exactly what we want. Next, I'm going to right click on the offset layer and I'm going to duplicate it. Now this will serve as the layer that we're going to use to cut this out from the backing. So what I need to do here is I need to actually change the color. I like to make it something very contrasting. So I'm going to change the color to orange. And these, we are not going to attach or group them in any way. We're going to leave them separate. The next thing that I do for these is to click, drag and select the sticker that we have and the offset. And I'm going to right click and attach. Because these layers need to cut in exactly that position, I need to attach those. So what I do next is I drag the sticker on top of the second offset 
I select both of those and I align them to the center so that I know that they're exactly on top of each other. What I like to do while I'm working with moving everything around is to group the sticker and the offset layer. So I'm going to select it, I'm going to right click and group it. Now the reason why we group it and not attach it is so that we're still keeping those two colors separate so that we can cut them two separate times and it'll make sense a little bit later but for now what we're going to do is we're going to optimize the space on our cutting mat. So this means duplicating the design a few times and starting to lay things out so that they make sense within the space. And I'm also going to change the color of the block to white so that I can very easily see if there are going to be any overlaps. I'm going to rotate shapes and move them around and see exactly how these shapes are going to fit on this page to see if we can get the most out of this page. If I find that by decreasing the size of the sticker by a few millimeters or so, I'll be able to fit so many more stickers on the page, then sometimes I'll do that. And I will just drag the sticker a little bit smaller to be able to fit another one onto the page. And from here, we just fill up the page. So now that I've optimized the space pretty much as far as I can go, if you are able to fill in the gaps with some other stickers that you want to create, then you totally can. I'm going to leave it just as is, and we're going to move on to the next step. The next step is preparing for everything to be cut. So what we need to do here is to select the different layers and attach them together. So we're going to select all of the gray layers and attach those, and we're going to select all of the orange layers and attach those so that they are two separate elements. So I'm going to ungroup everything that we have. And I also like to collapse the layers that I'm working with on the, sec on the side panel, just so that I know exactly what I'm working with. Now the first step is going to be quite easy. We're going to select all of these stickers that we're going to cut. And you can do this either by clicking on the stickers because they will be at the top, or you can do it by selecting them in the side panel. And we're going to right click and attach all of those together. And we're going to make sure that the measurements are smaller than 29.2 centimeters. I can't tell you the number of times that it has happened to me that I've done all of this work and I haven't checked the dimensions. So always make sure to just quickly check the dimensions. And here it's 29.07 wide and 29.156 in height. So we are under 29.2, so we're good to go. So we can right click and we can attach all of those layers together. This just means that when we send it to the Make It panel, everything will be in one specific layer. So I'm going to then collapse that layer so that those are all hidden and I'm going to select the rest of the layers which are the orange bits which is the underneath section and I'm going to right click all of those and attach those. It will bring them to the front, don't worry, we can right click and send it to the back so that we can see what we're working with. We also no longer need the square, so we can hide the square because we don't want that to cut. Now we can send it to our machines and you'll see here that when you click on it, it'll show you all of the stickers and there are the backing of the stickers and they will be in exactly the same place. And I'm sure you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So this we will cut and weed everything, apply the transfer tape, and then we will go and cut through the stickers. So I'm going to leave it on mat one, I'm going to load my vinyl onto my mat. So now I'm going to select the material that I'm going to be cutting. I'm going to be using the textured metallic setting. My Cricut has been on a little bit of a strike lately and none of the cut settings seem to quite be cutting it. <laughs> so I'm going to use the textured metallic setting as it's a nice high pressure and we're going to cut all of the vinyl and then weed it together. I am going to be using my light grip mat, so I'm going to remove the protective sheeting and place the premium vinyl onto the mat. And now I'm going to load it into the Cricut and I'm going to press cut. And now that this has finished cutting, we are going to test the cut or check the cut to see that it has cut properly. And
and it looked like it did a wonderful job so I'm going to press the unload button and we are going to weed it. Now without removing the vinyl from the mat we are going to weed it. So we're going to just pull off the remainder of the vinyl. And weed the rest of the decals. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Cricut tutorials. Now on to the next step. Now that we're done weeding, we're going to apply our transfer tape, which I have just done. So I've just taken the transfer tape and burnished it onto the entire page, squeegeeing out all of the bubbles. And now we're going to load it back into our machines and we're going to cut this section. We're going to cut this on quite a heavy setting, so I like to use the craft board setting. You can use a craft board with less pressure, but you may need to tinker around with your settings to see what works for you for the type of vinyl that you're using. I'm using the Cricut Premium Vinyl. The reason I'm not using Smart Vinyl is because the backing of Smart Vinyl is way too thick. It's going to take you way too long to cut through it. So I prefer the softer backing. So your Graffy Tac or your Cricut Premium Vinyl will work best for this because the backing of the actual vinyl is a lot softer and easier to cut through. Make sure that you are careful to load it into the same orientation as what you did before. So we cut it with all of the ones down the side and these two facing up on that side. It's very important that you remember to do this as we need to make sure that everything is going to be cutting in the same place. Otherwise you're going to lose an entire page of stickers. And as always, we check the cut before we unload. Looks good. And now we quite simply remove the backing from the mat. And now we can use our scraper to lift up the stickers. Or you can flip your mat over and pull the stickers off that way. And here we have all of our stickers ready to be shipped off and sold because they already have the transfer tape on them. So when the client gets them, all they will need to do is flip them over, remove the backing and apply their decal. If you're looking for some other Cricut beginner tutorials, make sure to check out this playlist. Thanks so much for watching and remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.